one. First and foremost, I want to give all praise and honor and glory be to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakhak Budash. And I want to say double honors to the apostles and the elders, great millstone. They're all well, shalom. To the hopeful elect, <clears throat> you know, out there listening and learning, you know, in the sincere hopes that we may edify. And feed the lambs of Yahweh Shai, especially in these last days. And um, <clears throat> I'm gonna make this lesson too long. I just wanted to like, um, you know, speak about a couple of things. Like today, you know, um, I went, um, you know, I did my little. Um, Ah oh, man, Shin was it Shinrin Yoku? <laughs> the elder apostle Gabar, you know, mentions about was it Shinrin Yoku, like forest forest walking. Um Yeah, Shinrin Yoku, also known as forest bathing, it is a Japanese practice that involves spending time in a forest to connect with nature and promote relaxation. And boy, and the spirit is ten forty four. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> if the camera will pick it up, let me see. Yeah. You know, it's currently 10.44 anyway, but I can, there you go, see it on the camera there. So that's the spirit anyway, but um, but yeah, Shinrin Yoku, you know, uh, forest bathing. And it promotes relaxation and um, and pretty much, and that's what I did today. You know, and I actually took my, you know, my, my family out there, because I got, you know, I got a family and stuff, you know, children, stuff like that, you know. For those of you that may know, um... I mention them in my videos from time to time. <clears throat> you know, we do the best that we can. Uh, but, you know, this truth comes first regardless. And um, as I was doing that, the reason why I did that, you know, went to the, um, you know, to the forest and that is because I actually wanted to, I wanted to, um, you know, I did want to meditate on, um, you know, what's really important, you know. Um, because for the most part, you know, we don't want to be around, you know, the people that are involved in this man's system. When I say this man, I'm talking about the wicked of um, <clears throat> this king, this wicked king, the rulers of this wicked kingdom, you know, headed by the Edomites, which are the wicked that the Bible speaks of. And there's a very wicked vibration that's going on out here, you know, that we don't want to be a part of. And, um, excuse me, um... And for the most part, you know, when you pull away from the wicked vibration, you know, you become a target, you know, um, for these demons to point the finger at you, you know, like you, you're like you're losing the plot because you you don't want to be down with what they're down with. You don't want to be um, joining hand, hand in hand with wickedness, because remember what we have to understand is and do the math on this, like there's many more. There's many more that are going to be destroyed than than are actually going to be walking the um, path of righteousness that actually desire to be saved. And um, only the elect are going to be saved. The elect in the nation of Israel, at that, you know, are going to be saved in these last days. And uh, there's many more people that seek to do evil in the world, or that seek to do acts of dark or dark acts in the world that actually want to do um do right. And so therefore, you know, um, <clears throat> basically it's like us against, it's like us against the world, you know, and it feels like that a lot of the time, most of the time, because we constantly meditate on the scriptures. Now that, that scripture comes to mind, let's get uh, Sirach 39, which uh, we read at the camp yesterday. And uh, this is Sirach 39 and 1, it says, but he that giveth his mind to the law of the most high. And is occupied in a meditation thereof. And excuse me, you know, for my voice, I'm 
you know, kind of like raised my voice at the camp. You know, kind of, kind of lost my voice a little bit, and also I'm very relaxed right now. Um, from the Shinrin Yoku, <laughs> you know, the uh, forest bathing that I just came from. Um, and it's very, very, very beneficial, man. You know, for, you know, definitely sharpens your mind. Definitely, you know, promotes uh, meditation on the right things. And um, and I'm about to read the scripture. You know, to land back off that thought process, it says, uh, "Sarat thirty nine and one, but he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High, and is occupied in the meditation thereof." Because you see, when you, when you, when you, uh, you know, when you appreciate the blueprints of the Most High, you know, and you connect to everything that's around us, that's that's been created, that's been designed, and you know who the Creator is, and you know His name, and you know His Son's name, and you know what. You know that you're fighting to get back to that state where there's going to be peace and harmony on the earth. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But for the most part, you know, a lot of these people actually, they they want to point the finger at you like you're you're a nut job because you actually want righteousness on the earth. Like you want things to go back, you know, to a paradise. You know, you want things to be running right. You want things to be running in, uh, harmoniously. You know, and only a demon would want the opposite of that. Only a demon would want the opposite of harmoniousness only a demon would want chaos to continue on whether it's you know adultery eating pork shrimp lobster you know whether it's sodomy all these acts of of chaos and confusion and when all they do is promote death in the earth only a nut job really would want those things to continue so when we say that we don't want those things to continue the people that are on the other side, there's more of them that want to point the finger at us because we don't want what they want to fight for, you know? Um, and as we, you know, are occupied in the meditation, there are, it goes on to say, we'll seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. Now, this is our book. You know, this, this, you know, the, the scriptures, you know, that, that applies to the Israelites, man. And, um, you know, where, where to seek out the wisdom of all the ancient. And that's all up in the scriptures. The scripture says the things that are written afore time were written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Like when you read in these scriptures about, you know, previous empires that reigned and they had their time to rule and they got taken down like the Babylonians and the handwriting came on the wall. And, you know, that's, you know, that's something that, that handwriting coming on the wall, man, that's something that they didn't anticipate. That's something that, that empire at that time didn't foresee happening. But then the Lord brought that kingdom down. You know, Darius came up in there. It was a sur surgical strike. And you had the Medo-Persian Empire that rose off the back of that. And then after the Medo-Persian Empire, the Lord pretty much, you know, gave the empire to the to the Alexander the Creep. And then he left it to his four generals. And that's, you can read that in Daniel 7, Daniel 8. You know, like, I mean, the Bible is based on historical facts, man. And we believe that. And people want to talk about Bible times. But we're actually still living in these times. And see, this is where it gets mystical for people. Where it gets tripped out for people that actually can't. They don't have the gift of faith mixed with the word. It's the, you know, they want to call you crazy because you believe in words that were written down thousands of years ago. Well, hold on a minute. Well. That's what biblical prophecy is like. You know, you had prophecies that have already taken place, but then you've got prophecies that are still yet to take place. We're still living in the time of prophecy, and that's the testimony of Yahweh Shai. And what is the testimony of Yahweh Shai? It is the spirit of prophecy, Revelation nineteen and ten. You know, so we got to be occupied in prophecies, man. Like the scriptures say, okay, because we bear the testimony of Yahweh Shai. And as we bear the testimony of Yahweh Shai, you know, we're not ashamed to confess him, you know, before men, you know. And the scripture says, Whoso shall confess me before men, him him also will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. You know? So we have faith in that. So Revelation 19 and 10 says, And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant. And of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai, worship the Most High. For the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. 
<clears throat> so, you know, the word prophesy means to say before. You know, the scripture says, um, the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. So we have the gift of faith mixed with the word. We have biblical prophecy, which keeps us stable. You know, we believe in these prophecies, which keeps us going forward, which keeps us knowing that we're in a vibration of knowing that the Lord is 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 making good on his word. We, You know, he always has done. So why would he not in these last days? You know, ask yourself these questions. You know, we should always ask ourselves these questions. Well, what's it all about? Why are we here? You know, like what would what, like what's our what's our duty? And coming into this truth, <clears throat> you know, you actually get a sense of purpose. You get a sense of duty. Like don't the scripture say like after we've done all all these things say that we're unprofitable servants because we have done that which is our duty to do so this in this indeed is a duty like we actually have a duty to teach this word you know let me go into the definition of duty it says a moral or legal obligation a responsibility a task or action that one is required to perform as part of one's job. So this is our main profession. This is our main profession that we're involved in and we have a duty and a task that we've been given. And this task that we've been given is the, the height. If you're not of the elect, you won't get it. That's the title of his life. He's just got a life as a spirit. Damn, that's just kind of, yeah, but, man. Say, so yeah, this weren't planned, by the way. I'm just kind of just, I'm flowing in the spirit right now. And I just, you know, but the thing is, we have a duty. And, um, you know, we have we have been given tasks to do, you know. how wish I said, like, or the scriptures say, you know, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should, you know, um, bring forth fruit. Okay, um, so like, bear with me, man. Like I said, I'm kind of relaxed right now from that Shinrin Yoku. I'm kind of just, um, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm um, really chilled out right now. I'm just, um, you know, just thinking about like, you know, the heavenly gifts that the Lord has bestowed upon us to understand this word, and uh, you know, we're in a we're in a very good position, you know, because when you really think about it, these people that don't have this truth. Now the scripture says in Isaiah 33 and 6, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength for salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. But those that don't have the wisdom and knowledge, where are they going to be when all hell breaks loose? And we don't want to be there. Well, we know what's going to happen to those that don't have that stability. We know exactly what's going to happen to them. The scripture says men's hearts shall fail, fail them for fear. And we were talking about this, you know, yesterday at the camp, talking about the second death. These people are not ready to be introduced to a time you know, that's never been introduced to, to man on earth since there was a nation. That's the, that's what's coming, you know. So when you see, you know, the downfall of this man's kingdom, when you see the signs of his downfall, the divided kingdom that we're witnessing right now, when we see the uproars of the people, the earthquakes, the pestilences, when we see these things happening, we know that it's leading up to the day of the Lord, the dreadful day of the Lord. And that's why the scripture says, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what, to what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it. So, um, yeah, we're about to enter into some times. But for, for us that believe, you know, we're in the know. Okay, this is John 15 and 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you in all danger. All right, this is only for the elect, you know. Um, it remains to be seen who are the chosen. We've been called, but we hope that we've been chosen. And ultimately, the elect have been chosen. You know, they've been predestined for salvation. That's predestination right there. All right. Um, it says, it was like Ephesians 1 and 4 on down. That ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. So the name is important. Like I was mentioning yesterday, I saw that movie Indiana Jones. And um, in order for him to get through... That booby trap cave 
he had to get through the, you know, that obstacle and he had to spell out the name of the Lord on the floor. And the floor had all these different letters on it. It had panels with all these different letters on them. And he jumped on J. And at the moment he jumped on the letter J first to spell out the name of the Lord, he fell through the ground. So that, they're showing you in the movie that, that the Lord's name don't begin with the letter J. And then he said, oh, man, it was, you know, that, you know there was no letter, letter J in Latin, you know? Because remember, the scriptures speak about the inscription on Yahweh Shai's crucifixion. It was, it, you know, you know, king of the Jews, you know, um, it was written in he, uh, Hebrew, Greek, and the Latin. All right, well, we know that the Lord is a Hebrew Israelite, so he, he had a Hebrew name. He has a Hebrew name, and his name is Yahweh Shai, which means he the Savior. And that's exactly what he's coming back to do. That's a name sign right there. That's a nomen omen, you know? And, and guess what? It takes faith to believe that too. And, you know, we get to smile on, um, when we say this because we actually believe. We actually believe in these scriptures. We believe in the words of this book, man. And um, faith mixed with the word. Let me get Hebrews 4 and 12. It's been a while since I read this one right here. Um, but it gets straight to the point when dealing with... Um, you know, the gift of faith mixed with this word, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful combination when faith meets the word. It says, for unto us, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2, for unto us. Oh man. <laughs> That's Satan, see? <coughs> I ain't sneezed, I ain't sneezed all day. <coughs> this always happens. <coughs> Since I do a lesson, all kinds of sneezing, allergies playing up. Ah oh, man. Satan's <laughs> don't stop, man. This is um. See, this is what I'm saying. Satan don't want the scripture to come out. That's why I must read it. <coughs> All right. <coughs> it says uh, Hebrews chapter four verse two. For unto us was the gospel preached, and the word gospel means good news. By the way, you know, so it's it's good news for us to know that the earth will be set back to its harmonious state. It's good news to know that Yahweh Shai is going to put an end to our suffering. It's good news to to know that the kingdom of the wicked and this kingdom of oppression, you know, um, you know, whether you're being oppressed by the food that you eat, the music that you listen to, um, the air that you breathe, the water that you drink, everything's tainted, everything's polluted, you know, you know, um, everywhere you turn, you know, life has been weaponized against you. And I'm talking about mainly you, you Israelites, you know, um. And plus we're under the curses, you know. But the gospel, you know, uh, is good news. So um, Yahweh Shai is coming to deliver us, you know, from all of these things. All of these things that, you know, hold us back from um, peace, you know, and harmony in the earth. He's coming back to deliver us from all of these things that seek to hold us back. You know, and we get to, we get to smile when we say that because as we meditate on the kingdom, we know what's coming. You know, we have the um, the foresight to be able to believe in that. And um, people might call you crazy for that, but fuck them. The scripture says all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. You know, and the, the fact that we have faith in this word, it actually offends the unfaithful. And that's why they come up against us. Yeah, I wish I said it best. He said, <clears throat> the servant isn't greater than the master. If they persecuted me, they shall persecute you. You know, so when you have faith mixed with the word, man, you're good. You know, you're good. So we just got to keep, you know, fighting the good fight of faith, like the scriptures say. All right, it says, um, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So faith is a key ingredient mixed with this word. Um, and faith is a gift, Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace are you saved through faith and not that of yourselves. It is a gift. Of Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shai. This faith is a gift, man. You know, we've we've been given a gift, and you know, we you can't um you can't give yourself the gift of faith. You can't buy faith. Okay? That's something that has to be given to you. And guess what? It gets given to you from from Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shai, man. So that's a beautiful thing to know that like you you've been given a gift from from the throne, like you know, from the you know the uh, Supreme Yahweh, like you've been given that gift, you know, and it was set up 
for you to receive that. And without faith, it's impossible to please him, man. Uh, Hebrews 11 and 6. For he must... Let's get that scripture. <clears throat> Hebrews uh, chapter 11, uh, verse 6. And it says, um, For without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to Yahweh must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, how many people do you see in your daily travels you might be going to the supermarket to buy some groceries you might be going to work you might be coming back from work you might be on your way to the you know to to this place that place whatever you you bump into these people even members of your own family you come across them um which i don't really see members of my family man they cut me off a long time ago they don't they chat shit about me all i just got my immediates i got my you know my immediates you know <laughs> You might have a you know, woman, children. You just deal with your immediate. But the thing is, how many people do you come across that, you know, actually um, <clears throat> diligently seeking, seeking after your halbash and your shai through this work? You know, there's a lot more people that don't than actually do. And that's why the scripture says many are called, but few are chosen. So it's a normal thing, you know, for us to feel like um, these people or, you know, these people are, um, there's many more of them that don't believe. It's a normal thing. You know, that's how the scripture says, thinking not strange, you know, the fiery, the fiery trial, which is to try us. It's a part of the fiery trial, man, because everything that we stand for and everything that we represent, you know, we're having to witness those things going, you know, the opposite direction <laughs> with our own two eyes. We can see everyone else going in the opposite direction. That's not of the elect. As we strive to be of the elect, they're, they're heading in the direction that's solidifying them not being of the elect. You know, lest the Lord puts the spirit upon them and they do a U-turn and they repent. You know, I'm talking about only of the nation of Israel because this ain't about saving the heathen. It's fuck the heathen. They're going into captivity. Like the scriptures say, um, we shall take them captives whose captives we were in Isaiah 14, uh, Jeremiah 30 and 16. All they that devour these shall be devoured. Yeah, these are ad uh, our adversaries. <laughs> that's right. Our adversaries, our enemies, they're about to be devoured. So that's what awaits the heathen. And we're going to rule over them with a rod of iron. You know? Um, and that's what's been promised to us as well. So we, we we wait upon the Lord for that. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, till I, till I rise up to the praise. So this is about patience. When you're waiting for something, you're patient. So the word patience means to suffer. So we suffer these people. We suffer all the injustice we suffer these people we suffer the, the you know the disrespect the demonic um activities we suffer the demonic conversations that they have that we have to put up with that we have to navigate around on our jobs on our way back from our jobs all of this we suffer all of that but you know because that's what the scriptures speak about in ezekiel 9 and 4 about you know the men that sigh and that cry for all the abomination that we've done in the midst thereof you know <clears throat> So we're surrounded by abominable filth. Scripture says, can two walk together except they be agreed? And, um, you know, the answer is no. We ain't supposed to have no, no dealings with these people. And rightfully so, because whether they represent, what are they pushing? They're in the vibration of death. Now you want to be around them, now the Lord might judge them. And because you're around them, you might get caught up with, it, with that judgment. Because you didn't take heed to the scriptures. The scriptures cover everything. It's very simple. It's very plain. Scriptures speak about the simplicity that's in Yahweh Shai. This is Proverbs 29 and 27. An unjust man is an abomination to the just. And he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. It's as simple as that. Those that are unjust, right, are an abomination to the just. And he that is upright in the way of the Lord is an abomination to the wicked, vice versa. They hate us, we hate them. And it's as simple as that. You know, just like righteous Lot was vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, we're vexed in this time with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Surprise, surprise. We sigh and cry. And we pray and we put curses on this kingdom. And we pray to Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shai to deliver us out of this place. Because we want peace, we want harmony. Because the scripture says in Micah 2 and 10, Arise ye and depart, but this is not your rest. We can't, you know, we can't rest here. Ultimately, we can't rest here. 
you know, a good precept to go with that is Hebrews 13 and 14. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. You know? So this is what we're seeking for, being surrounded by filth. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate. Remember that. And they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. That's Amos 5 and 10. I want to say, yeah. So we're being hated, man. And it's really a blessing. Okay? It's really a blessing. And every now and again, I like to do lessons on this because... It actually helps keep me in the right spirit. I'll tell you that. It actually comforts me to re um to revisit this topic. To let you know, because it you know it's good to reaffirm, to comfort us with the scriptures, to let us know the scriptures let us know that we ain't crazy, man. That's what it is. And in this world, like what did Scarface say in that movie? Um Al Pacino in, in the movie Scarface, he said, You need people like me. He said, You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers and say, That's the bad guy. You know, he said, no, what does that make you good? He said, you're not good. You just know how to lie, how to hide. <laughs> and he was drinking, he was yacked up, you know, he was, um, you know, he was a little saucy in that. And, um, but he was speaking truth. And what does the scripture say? They hate him that rebuketh in the gate. They abhor him that speaketh uprightly. When you speak the truth, these people that know how to hide and how to lie, when you put it out and you lay it bare for them out on the table, they can't take it. Members of your own family want to come up against you for this. People at the camp, they want to come up against you. Why? Because they actually stand for wickedness. Because they like to do dark deeds. They like to hide the dark deeds that they do. But we expose that through the spirit. Because we got the light. The scripture says, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Ye are the light of the world. So we have the light. We expose the darkness, man. And they don't like the fact that the darkness gets exposed. You know? Was that John 3 and 19? And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. That's how it goes, man. Because they, lo they, they love doing dark, evil deeds. <laughs> they hate getting condemned by the light. Okay, this is Luke chapter 6, verse 21. But blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. See, see we're going to laugh, man. We're weeping now, but we're going to laugh. Okay? Then was our mouth filled with laughter, right? Was that Psalms 126? Verse 1. When the Lord Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, have done great things for them. Difference. Us and them. The Lord's about to do great things for us, man. We just got to patiently wait. Wait ye upon me. You know? But the point is, our mouth is about to be filled with laughter, man. So, blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. So that's a precept to Luke 6 and 21. Psalms 126 and 1. Blessed are ye, this is Luke 6 and 22 again. It says, blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company. Why? Because they're dark niggas. These people out here that actually want this kingdom to continue, they're you know they're of their father the devil and the lusts, the lusts. Let's go into that lust, man. Let's get that First uh, John two and fifteen. Right? What does the scripture say here? It says, "Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him." James four and four. Ye adulterers and adulteresses know ye not the friendship of the world is enmity with the most high. So you're at odds with the king of terrorists, man. When you when you embrace this current rulership, when you embrace the you know the lifestyles that lead to death, when you embrace sin, you know, like you're you're pretty much, you know, at, at odds with the king of terrorists. Emily with the Most High, it says, verse 16, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not, is of, is not of the Father, but is of the world. So that's of the world, man. And you know, you can't serve two masters, but either you will love the one and hate the other. So you're either on this side, or you're on that side. It's as simple as that. You either believe or you don't. You either have faith in the word, and it's going to profit you, or you don't have faith. And it's not going to profit you. So back in Luke 6 and 22. And um, and separate you from their company. So these are these are blessings, right? When people do this to you. And shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil. 
for the son of man's sake. And excuse me for my low tone, you know, the house is everyone's sleeping at the moment, so you know, but um but for the son of man's sake, and that's why we confess the name of the Lord, man. We're standing stiffly for his name. Yahweh Shai is about to set crowns on the heads of those that stood stiffly for his name. You know, for the son of man's sake. Yeah, that's right. To hell with these demons, man. They're going to die in their pride. Don't worry about them. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The scriptures tell you these things. But rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. So that's it. The reward is coming, man. And Peter asked Yahweh Shai, you know, we've forsaken all. What shall we have there for? And Yahweh Shai told him, look, man, you shall sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And you shall inherit a hundredfold. You know, you shall receive a hundredfold for, it, for forsaking all these things. Everything. Put in the word first for putting this duty first. The duty of teaching this word. You know, for, for standing up and um, bearing the responsibility of teaching the word. You shall receive a hundredfold for all the things that you sacrifice. So just know that, you know, there's going to be a reward for the sacrifice that we make. As we uh, press on towards the kingdom, man. So stay up, stay strong. And I pray this is edifying. Um, and just meditate, man. And, you know, every now and again, meditate on the fact that we're blessed to have this truth. Immensely blessed. Like Elder Apostle Gabal always says, we're immensely blessed to have this truth. And stay prayed up. You know, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Chazak, Lab, Kal, Akim. You know, all you Akim, Wa, Akwath, all you sincere sisters, you listening, learning, believing. And you fight in a good fight of faith, man. Stay strong in the spirit, Lord willing. A, um, in your patience, possess your soul. Shalom to the elect.